All right, this video is about the making of a bridge for my Fender lap steel build that I made about a month ago. I made a copy of a 1950s uh, lap steel. So I was able to find some of the parts on eBay that was great. Uh, they were very hard to find, very rare. And unfortunately the bridge, which was somewhat simple, I could not find. So I hired, long story short, I hired a so-called professional to make the bridge and uh, it, it turned into a disaster. It was, um, it was really bad. So anyway, out of frustration, I headed down in the basement and I knew I had some metal sheets lying around and uh, I just got obsessed with it. And I was able to make a bridge and it worked pretty well uh, for that lap steel. So this, um, this video is about the making of that bridge. So I knew I had some pieces downstairs, uh, down in my basement of a small work area down here. And I figured if I could find an L bracket, cut that out, I could at least give it a shot. So, uh, um, I really don't have a lot of experience in building. Uh, I just became obsessed and I love that. Um, Fender Champion lap steel. So I got obsessed with both making that lap steel and of course I had to make the make the bridge. So uh, again, I just picked, picked some of these pieces of metal. I had a piece of aluminum that was about this thick. It was similar to this, maybe a little bit thicker that I started with. So pretty simple as far as the tools. Uh, I used a Dremel. I used um, a hacksaw and of course a range of sandpapers that I went through so the whole range up to uh, 3,000 uh, grit pads that are they were fantastic uh, I highly recommend these got these at an auto shop brilliant uh, tool uh, let's see also using uh, buffing and polishing kit, which worked out really well Again, I don't know what the hell I was doing, but I was just obsessed with it. And I'm an artist uh, by trade, so I paint and I draw. And I figured with good measuring, measuring, I was able to do it. So this guy really helped me out. Uh, using the sandpaper on the metal, what I found that uh, the secret was this WD-40 to lubricate it while I was sanding it. So that helped out really, really well. So what you're about to see is the making of the bridge. So there's some photos, a little bit of video, and um, I'm talking over that a little bit to explain some different things. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you haven't seen my lap steel build, check that out. It's a Fender copy of a um, 1950s uh, Fender Champion is actually the name of that. So hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot. Okay, here is the actual bridge that I paid for, and you can see the problems right away. Very unprofessional. So it inspired me to make this bridge. Here is the actual original bridge that I'm remaking. Here is the metal piece that I started with. I had to round the corners, so I just used this little disc as a guide. Here's the copy from Lolar pickups uh, from, it was based on the original pickup. So there was no plans for this. I couldn't find any templates, so I had to make my own. So it took about 30 hours or so to do that. 
So this was a little challenging to try to get these measurements exact. I knew there was no really there was really no play involved with the measurements. So at the time I didn't have a drill press, so I actually had to do this by hand. So here's some practice holes. So here I had three holes um, with the three larger screws that would hold the, the, the bridge down to the body. So I had to use a countersink bit, a little nerve wracking without a drill press. So here I'm using a little wood block and I taped some sandpaper to that and I'm also using that WD-40 to lubricate it. Some people have asked me about the, the metal because it's aluminum, it's not as strong. So you definitely don't want to sand this by you know, using your fingers. You, want, you definitely want to use a, a harder, flatter surface so it's smooth. And of course, you want to go up um, consecutively with the with the sandpaper. A nice smooth run from one to the next. You don't want to skip grits. And here I'm starting to use the uh, auto sandpaper, uh, the pads. Again, these are these are fantastic. Again, really important to check every once in a while, wipe it clean and see where you're at, see the smoothness or roughness. Yeah, you can see here I'm using gloves. Not really sure how toxic this toxic this stuff is, but better off using gloves. Okay, so here I'm using a cotton wheel, uh, and I'm using the jeweler's rouge, uh, so that that work that stuff works out really well. You can find this stuff uh, at you know different different hardware stores. Um, basically, it's what the jewelers use to polish uh, the jewelry. And you have to watch this. You can't keep that metal piece still. You got to keep moving around, or it'll it'll burn again because it's uh, it's aluminum. It's not as hard as steel. And 
here is the finish. All right, so I stepped up my tool game here and I picked up a drill press, really cheap um, press for about 25 bucks. I got that used. So here I'm aligning the holes, so this is the string through body. Just making sure those are accurate. And what I found out, uh, which I didn't realize, is it's not good to drill straight through this body, through this thickness. Uh, it's better to go halfway to the top and then halfway through the bottom. And also I've used tape on the drill bit. It's a great tool just to uh, show the exact depth that you need to go to, so you're not going too far. Finally, screwing this thing down to the wood. It's a great feeling to finally get to this point. As you can see, that's rock maple. There's a reason why they call it rock maple. Very hard wood. And here I'm polishing the other metal pieces. These are both original that I found on eBay, thankfully. Okay, so here's the finish. Uh, in total, it took about 180 hours. I'm not sure how long it took to do the bridge, uh, but if you're interested in seeing the whole making uh, video, uh, please please watch that. If you're interested, in, uh, please subscribe, and I hope you enjoy.